The Gauss-Jordan Elimination versus Gaussian Elimination Part 2. Please be sure to watch Part 1 of this video where we discuss the difference between the two methods and solve a system of linear equations using the Gauss-Jordan Elimination Method. Please be sure to subscribe so you don't miss out on any future videos. Next, we're going to be solving this system of linear equations by using the Gaussian Elimination Method. The first step is to write this system of linear equations in an augmented matrix notation. We have discussed this process in great depth in a previous video. Please see the link to the video in the description. The next step is to work column by column by using the pivoting method to transform each column and transform this matrix into row echelon form. First, we want to transform the matrix to obtain a 1 in the pivot position. In this example, we can see that we already have a 1 in the pivot position. Therefore, we want to transform the matrix to obtain a 0 for every other entry in the column. And we're going to do this by adding a multiple of a row to another row. This operation leads to the matrix on the right, and we can see a sample calculation. Next, we move on to column two, and we need to obtain a one in the pivot position. And in order to do that, we are going to multiply the pivot row highlighted in gray by a constant. And this operation leads to the matrix on the right, where we have a one in the pivot position and a sample calculation. Next, we want to transform the matrix to obtain a zero in all the entries that are below the leading entry one in this column. And in order to do this, we are going to add a multiple of a row to another row. And this operation leads to the matrix on the right. And there's a sample calculation. Next, we want to transform the matrix to obtain a one in the pivot position. Therefore, we will multiply the pivot row by a constant to obtain the matrix on the right. And there's a sample calculation. Now, is this matrix in row echelon form? And this matrix is in row echelon form if it satisfies two conditions. Rows containing only zeros are at the bottom. There are no rows that only contain zeros, therefore this condition is not applicable. And the second condition is that the first non-zero element of any row is the leading entry and is to the right of the leading entry in the previous row. So the leading entry in row one is right over here, and the leading entry in row two is right over here. And this leading entry is to the right of this leading entry, and this leading entry in row three is to the right of this leading entry. Therefore, this matrix is in row echelon form. And next we will write down the following three equations that can be obtained from this matrix matrix and we can conclude that x3 is equal to 1. Next we are going to use back substitution to solve for the variables. In the previous slide we determined that x3 is equal to 1 and now we're going to be plugging in this value into the second equation in order to solve for x2 which we can conclude is equal to 5. And now x2 equals to 5 and x3 equals to 1 will be plugged into the first equation in order to solve for x1 which is equal to 2. Therefore, this is the solution to the system of linear equations. Next, we will be solving the following system of linear equations. And the first step is to write the system of linear equations in the augmented matrix notation. We will be working column by column and using the pivoting method to transform this matrix into row echelon form. First, we want to obtain a 1 in the pivot position. And we can see that there is already a one in the pivot position. Therefore, we need to move on to the next step where we want to transform the matrix to obtain a zero for every other entry in the column below the leading entry one. And we can do this by adding a multiple of a row to another row. This operation leads to the matrix on the right. Next, we want to obtain a one in the pivot position for row two. And we can see that in row three, there is already 
a leading entry of one. Therefore, if we swap the two rows, we can get the following matrix, where we have a one in the pivot position for row two. Next, we want to obtain a zero for every other entry in the column below the leading entry. And we can do this by adding a multiple of a row to another row. And this will lead to the following matrix. And now we want to obtain a one in row three in the pivot position. And we can do this by adding a multiple of a row to another row. And this leads to the following matrix. But over here, we can see that the last row indicates that this system of linear equations is equal to zero equals seven. Since this cannot be a solution, it is inconsistent and therefore there is no solution for this example. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe.